Well, hi, friends. Good to be with you. Today's Friday, the 26th of August. What a great day. I, uh, I love Fridays, not only because they're my day off to kind of find Sabbath and, and rest. And uh, usually I do something fun like fish or hunt or whatever the season we're in uh, provides. But it's just a great way to uh, enjoy and experience God differently than I do most of the rest of the days of the week. And today's habit that we're talking about for spiritual formation is prayer walking, prayer walking. Uh, Ronald Rollheiser, a, a writer in the area of spiritual formation, wrote, when we pray through Christ, more is involved than merely asking God in heaven to make some kind of intervention. The community too, and we ourselves, must be involved not just in the petition, but also in trying to bring about what the petition pleads for. Prayer walking. Prayer walking is a as it sounds and as as it's named is to walk while praying and uh typically that means to walk in places in uh, with deliberateness and intentionality so we pray for instance in the lord's prayer thy kingdom come thy will be done and then where do we ask this to happen? Well, we ask on the earth as it, in, as it is in heaven. Jesus instructed us to pray those words in the Lord's Prayer as we know it. But how do we do that then in an active way? What does that look like in our lives as we pray the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven? I think prayer walking is one of those spiritual formation practices that really gets to the heart. This is the action of that particular petition in prayer. So walking in a place and inviting Jesus into it and into that place, praying that the kingdom would come in that place and that uh, God would be there with his people is all a part of prayer walking. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples in my life, how I pray and walk or prayer walk. And it's really simple. There's nothing uh, really difficult about this at all. It goes this way on Sunday mornings, typically. As I make the long commute from the house to the church, and it's probably about 30 yards <laughs> across the parking lot, I begin praying as I leave the house for the people who would come and uh, drive into this parking lot here at church on Sunday mornings. That, uh, God forbid, uh, you're like my family and you're arguing on the way to church <laughs> that God would, as you pull into the parking lot, give you peace, give you a sense of presence and tranquility, that God would bring those uh, who he desires to these parking spaces that they might then enter the church. And then as I tap in the key code and enter into the back door of the church, I begin praying for these, these spaces as I'm walking. Uh, to my left, we have the Sunday school wing, and I pray for our Sunday school kids at all different ages. To my right, we have the nursery. I pray for our nursery kids. As we walk past then the fellowship room, typically that's where an adult Bible study is happening or some Christian fellowship, and I pray for that. As I walk by the kitchen, I pray for those who are preparing on a normal Sunday, and we're going to get back to this soon in, in September. I pray for Hebrews Cafe and the food that brings us together for fellowship. As I open my office, I pray for 
God's word that's laying right here. Usually there's a sermon attached and ready to go and be preached. I continue my walk as I seek to unlock the building, pray for those who would be in the Prince of Peace, that God would bless that time of fellowship. I would pray in each of these places, God, bring your kingdom here this day and this in this uh, to these people, to, to us. I get to the narthex and begin to pray, pray over the doors and through the doors. God, as I unlock this door, bless those who would come in through this threshold. May this be a holy place, a holy space, a special uh, anointing upon those, a blessing as they come in. Would this be in this narthex, in this lobby, would this be a place that people uh, find friendship and joy and celebration and fellowship and partnership and sharing in the gospel and i turn on the lights to the sanctuary and i walk through the pews typically this doesn't happen every sunday i'm not that biased or legalistic but i try and here's the thing in many cases i know where you sit <laughs> In many cases, I'm praying for our congregation, for you by name, by your seat. Lord, I know that the Lights family will be here. Or I know Charles and Elaine Davis will sit here. I know Norm and Sarah sit here. I know Pamela and Russ sit here. I know Craig and Liz sit here. I know Tim and Ashley sit here. And, and the list goes on. You know how it goes. And so it's an opportunity as I walk through the sanctuary, sanctuary to pray, God, your kingdom come, your will be done on the earth and specifically here on the earth in this sanctuary. This is prayer walk and it's powerful and it works, I'm telling you. I pray around the altar. I pray around the chancel as, as we come up for communion. I pray, God, meet us here by your presence in these simple elements. I pray back by the sound booth. This doesn't always work, <laughs> but I say, God, minimize the problems. <laughs> That's a tough prayer, I think, to pray and maybe for God to get at. Pray for our technicians. I pray for our live streaming. I pray through the choir area for our choir and our musicians, for our praise team. Pray for our ushers. I pray in the chapel for our evening service. I pray for our lectors as I walk by the lectern. I mean, you get the idea here, right? This is how we pray in a prayer walk. And this is a powerful prayer and powerful type of prayer. Another way I pray is I pray at home. I pray through the house as I walk it. You know, how often do we walk through the house and we're just trying to remember why we left one room and went into the next room? <laughs> well, maybe in those times where we forget, we stop and pray. Lord, I pray for this room. I pray for my family. I, I pray for my son, Nate, who is in this room. My wife, Jeanette, who works here in the office, in our home office. I, I pray for those who would gather on our patio. I pray then as I walk the dog. I walk teal through our neighborhood. I pray uh, God would uh, speak to our neighbors, that I would be neighborly. I pray God show me places I can love my neighbors as I love myself. You get the idea, prayer walking. You know, a lot of us have gotten into the habit of throwing something on our iPhones or Androids, and we're always got something going on in our ears. We like to listen to sermons or podcasts or YouTube or uh, heck, I, I know some of you that even listen to our worship services or our devotions as you're exercising or walking or moving from one place to the other. But let me encourage you to do something different. Would you walk and pray and pray, pray in that space? Pray for that place, for, pray for the people who would be there. I wonder if we all started to do this in our homes, in our neighborhoods, at our places of work. I wonder how the world would be changed. I know it would. Because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. That's what the Bible says. Your prayer is powerful and, and, and effective. And a prayer walk is a great way 
to live out the petition. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth in this place and the places I walk as it is in heaven. Amen. Been a joy, friends. Happy Friday. We'll see you this weekend. We worship, of course, for our traditional service at 830, contemporary service at 11. Oh, and here's a fun little tip. Uh, Bill Bishop will be preparing coffee for us in between services. Is a kind of a prelude or preview of Hebrews Cafe, which is going to start on September 7th when we do our Sunday school kickoff. We'll have um, cake and coffee, but we're going to start with the most important part, coffee. <laughs> That's this week in between services. And then our five o'clock service in the chapel is our informal service. Hope to see you there. God bless you. Bye-bye.